In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the accelerator pedal properly in terms of moving off, driving, speeding up, and even slowing down. As you'll see, there's a lot more to the accelerator than just going faster. And if you follow these tips that I'm sharing with you, you will become a better, smoother, and more confident driver over time. If you would like to support me here on YouTube, you can do so by PayPal. I leave a link in the description. And I just wanna say a big thank you to anybody out there who has supported me via PayPal. I really appreciate it. It's donations like yours is what keeps the channel active and up to date, both for you and for the learners following after you. If you would like me to analyze your driving test report sheet, just email me here, danetai at gmail.com. I will have a look at the report sheet and offer you some feedback so you can do better next time. The only thing I ask is that you share with me as much information as possible about what happened on the test. So let me know where the mistakes were made, what the tester said to you, and any other information. Because some people are just sending me the report sheets and no information to back it up. And although I have many talents, mind reading is not one of them. Anyway, let's get back to this video on using the accelerator properly. So let's get a few basics right first in relation to using the accelerator. Make sure you have your heel on the ground anytime you're using the accelerator or the brake. This takes the weight off your right foot and allows you to press the accelerator in an effortless and controlled way. You'll find it much easier doing it this way as opposed to having your right foot or your right leg suspended in midair. It's also good to practice swiveling your right foot between the accelerator and the brake. Practice this in a safe, quiet area while stationary in order to build up your confidence. Being able to swivel between the accelerator pedal and the brake pedal means you're going to have quick and easy access between both pedals in a controlled and efficient way. So the first thing to say about the accelerator is you have to use it very like you'd use the brake and that is come on to it very very gently press it very 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 gradually and build up the acceleration in a slow and gradual way because this is going to allow you to get a better feel for the car like i'm about to do now so when i'm moving off and um, if i'm with somebody in the first lesson i'd often get them just to practice the accelerator with the two hands on the wheel like this in the quarter to three position looking straight out there so that they're not getting distracted by looking at the revs because you don't you don't want to look at the revs that's only going to distract you away from where you want to be focusing on so I'd ask them then just to give the accelerator a little bit of dead weight. That just means putting your right foot on it, but not actually pressing it, kind of like dead weight. And then very, 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 very gradually, just building up the accelerator like that. I hope you can hear that there, gradually going up. And you'll get to about 1500 revs, or in, on my Opel course, it's one and a half. And at all times, be looking straight ahead with your hands like that, replicating what it's like to drive on the road maybe given the occasional mirror check as well, but looking ahead there. See that person crossing the road there? I'm looking at her there, and I'm listening. I'm not looking at the revs, I'm listening to the revs and focusing ahead. And then once that's been mastered, I just gradually let go of the accelerator then. It'll gradually reduce. And then we do the same exercise again, come back onto the accelerator gradually. Occasional check of the mirrors, hands on the wheel, replicating a normal driving position. Keeping the feet as still as I can, the right foot that is, and not focusing too much on, like not letting my thoughts focus too much on the right foot. My thoughts should be focused on what's out here. And hopefully then your right foot will go into autopilot and just stay in the one position and not go up and down and give excessive revs. And we gradually release. And then repeat that exercise to help you get a feel for the accelerator uh, so you can become more comfortable with it. So the accelerator can be used to speed up and actually slow down. By that I mean if you deaccelerate, that is letting go of the accelerator at certain points, convenient points, that's going to help the car to slow down and it's going to be smooth and more economical. 
Getting some juice moving off is also useful because it helps keep the car nice and smooth. So I'm going to do that here now. I'm going to move off here now in a second and I'm going to just do a couple of laps around this car park to show you the basics of pressing the accelerator and how if you press it too hard the car might jump forward, especially in first gear, okay? So I'll move off first. So I go into first gear, I get a little bit of juice. Like I was practicing there earlier, just get it up to one and a half or 15 depending on the car. I get the bite then by bringing the clutch up just over halfway. There's the bite. Now let the handbrake down. Now I keep the acceleration here. Don't lose the acceleration. Keep it for the first four or five seconds. And that's going to ensure smoothness then moving off, okay? Now I'm just staying in first gear deliberately here to show you um, a common mistake that learners make when they are um, at the early stages of their driving. So I'm just going to turn around here first. The most important thing as I'm doing this is, is that I'm giving it very, very little acceleration. I'm just barely pressing the accelerator because if I press the accelerator too hard, the car could easily jump forward like that in first gear. Because first gear, there it is again. I'm just going to slow down there again and, and there again. First gear is a very, very sensitive uh, gear. So if you press the accelerator a little too hastily like that, the car could easily just jerk forward and give an uncomfortable feel and it doesn't look like you've got a lot of control. So here we go again. This time now I'm going to accelerate much more gradually, okay? I'm gradually, gradually, gradually accelerating, looking ahead, focusing on the road ahead, but very, very gradually accelerating. And then I'll go into second gear, so no acceleration for that, off the clutch slowly, and then just a gentle, gentle acceleration there. Because again, if I'd accelerated too early or too hard there on the gear change, as I was changing gears, it would have jerked and jumped. Okay, now I'm going to go back to first gear now, so I'm just going to go a little bit of braking. I'm going to go into first gear here. Now I'm just going to gently accelerate forward a little bit, and that time I kept it very, very smooth, very, very gentle. I didn't press the accelerator hard and sudden like this, because that would have caused a jump, you see. And you don't want that, because it's not going to look good for you, and it's not going to do your confidence any good. So I'm going to go around here now again, I'm going to turn the car. So you'll notice there we have some people in front of us here, and this is where the importance of the accelerator is so important. So right now, I'm keeping my distance here, very, very, very slowly, and I'm going to accelerate now, but I'm going to do it very, very, very gently, and gradually, gradually build it up, because the pedestrians are out of the way there now. So that's a, a good example of where using gradual and gentle and subtle acceleration is very, very, very important. Now, I'm going to do a gear change here, okay? And you're going to see how important it is to not accelerate too hard. So it's going to get straightened up here now first. I'm in first gear now. Straighten the car up. Now, so I'm going to go into second gear. Oh, see that? Oops, awkward. So what happened there was I accelerated way too early there, okay? When I was changing gears there, I actually pressed the accelerator before I even had the clutch halfway up. And that's what caused the car to give a big rev and it kind of jerked forward a little bit, okay? So I'll go back into first gear here now again. Let's do it properly now, eh? So I'm gonna gradually build up a bit of juice. Now here I'm gonna change gear now again. So no acceleration, clutch in, move the gear stick, easy off the clutch and ever so gentle on the accelerator. And that's much better. So the reason there was a problem there with the gear change was because I accelerated too much, too early. I hadn't completed the gear change yet. The second time was better because I changed gear and I only accelerated when the clutch was about 95% up and what's more, I accelerated very gradually, which is much more suitable and better to a smooth gear change. So as I said earlier in the video, uh, a great use for the accelerator is to deaccelerate as a way of slowing down. It's almost a, an alternative way of braking as such. So I'm gonna do that here now in the car park with a few bends, um, deaccelerating into the bends, and maybe one or two out on the road then after that, okay? And, and you'll see how beneficial it can be. So let's get going, so into first gear, get the bite here then. All good. So I'm gonna turn here now, we're gonna look straight ahead there. I'm gonna get the second gear here now, just building up a small bit of speed. Now I'm letting go of the accelerator here now, so no acceleration. I'm completely off the accelerator, I'm hovering over the accelerator, but I am not pressing it, you see. And that gives me more control there, so it just gives me more control going into the bend. See here now, I'm gonna give it a little bit of juice here now, and now I'm gonna have no acceleration now. Absolutely no acceleration, zero acceleration. The momentum of the car 
is doing all the work here. Still no acceleration, still no acceleration, still no juice being pressed here. I'll give it a small bit of juice here now, say. And that, I mean, I, I was driving a good 30 meters there on the flat without any acceleration. So the car's momentum and the car's torque will get me through there. And here, I'm gonna do this now with a bit of acceleration to compare. I'm, going, I'm accelerating a bit here now. And it just feels like it's a bit uncomfortable, you know. Uh, not the best way to do it. I, I could feel myself dragging a bit that side. Uh, not ideal to be accelerating into any kind of a bend or a corner. So here again then, I'm just gonna go no acceleration again. I'm, I'm a little bit later with the no acceleration, but I was accelerating gently anyway. But again, the car is perfectly fine. It gives me more time to look, and it gives me more time to get control of the steering wheel. More time to straighten up as well. And one more time down this bend here. We'll do it properly this time. So I'll keep an eye on the mirrors there and kind of looking into where I'm going. Now, no acceleration and it just feels much more calm, much more professional. I have more time to steer, more time to look, and I just have more general time to take in my surroundings and watch for any danger or hazards ahead. So I'm coming down this road here now. There's a couple of parked cars here and I can see a bit of a bend to the left up ahead, okay? So at the moment I'm lightly accelerating, about 42, three kilometers. Now I'm just gonna let go of the accelerator here now and let the car drive into the bend by itself. Mirrors indicate right. Braking gently down to second gear here and then gently off the clutch. So I just de-accelerated into that bend there to give myself more control, you know? There was no need to accelerate into the bend there. So, looking into the road, no need for the handbrake, I'm on the downhill. Car's far enough away. Off I go here then. So, on this road then, it's a good straight road. I'm going to get myself up to 50 kilometers and fourth gear now in a couple of seconds. Just give a little glance at the mirrors. Okay, so I'm around about 50 kilometers there now, and I'm in fourth gear. Uh, what I'm about to do now is I'm about to do what I like to teach learners, and that is massage the accelerator, okay? So that means accelerating a little bit to keep it around about the 50 mark, and then in order to ensure I don't get over 55 or 56, I just let go of it slightly, and then I come back onto it ever so slightly, and then come back off it. It's a case of coming on and off the accelerator ever so slightly just to maintain a consistent speed. It's also a good idea just to keep a quick eye on your speedometer every now and then just to make sure that you're doing the right speed and that you're not going over it. It's always good to be aware of your speed as you're going along and as time goes on you'll get more used to it. There's a bit of a downhill there now you see so I'm just going to de-accelerate here because I don't need to because the momentum is going to keep me going more or less. Now I can quick glance at the speedometer and go down to 48, 49. So I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit there now, especially with the uphill there coming up. Keep an eye on my mirrors as well. So I'm just giving a little bit of acceleration there and I'm just gonna come off it slightly and I'm gonna come back onto it slightly. You know, so that's what it is. It's kind of coming on and off the accelerator to keep the speed safe and consistent. So here then there's a bend, so I'm going to de-accelerate for the bend, so completely off the accelerator, I might drop the turret actually. Now, no need to accelerate here, I can give it a small bit of juice here now, just to get me around the bend, say, looking for anyone else there. And as I'm coming down here, a bit of a downhill, so no need to accelerate here, especially if I'm worried about cars pulling out, I'm actually covering the brake here more so. So that's what I'm, what I'm talking about there. If you read the road ahead, it's going left down here, if you read the road ahead, think of the hills, think of the bends, you can then use the acceleration and then de-accelerate um, as you need in order to give, your more, give yourself more control. So I'm going to be going into a right turn now very, very soon. And I'm going to get up now to fourth gear and 50 kilometers. So I'm just accelerating a little bit. Then let, and then I'm just kind of, I'm kind of just letting go of the accelerator here now because I'm going into the bend. As I said, you don't have to always accelerate. Just de-accelerate is a good idea to give yourself more control. So slight bit of acceleration, slight bit of letting go then. So I'm going to mirrors, indicate right, and I'm gradually braking. Because by having a de-acceleration initially, it means I don't have to brake as much then when I'm coming into my turn. So I'm keeping right here then. Nice gentle stop, looking into the road before I turn. Waiting in first gear. Looks like I might be waiting over five seconds, so I'll use the handbrake here then. And I'll have my foot off the brake and onto the accelerator. Every now and then, you know, as I'm looking into the road, just to make sure. Now, mainly I need to be focusing on what's coming here. The odd look as well for any cyclists like that, but I'm looking into the road mainly. Just waiting for my gap and uh, eventually I'll get it. People ask, will you be penalized here? No, you won't. If it's not safe to turn, it's not safe to turn. Now it's safe now, in I go then, giving turns. And if I look ahead here then, 
in this housing estate I can see that it's a bit of a consistent uphill so it is a good idea then to give it some acceleration here just to keep yourself going you can still you can still let go of the accelerator every now and then if you want to like if you see there's a pothole or a drain or someone coming but you will need more consistent revs here going up the hill all right bit of a sharp end up here as well so I may actually need to accelerate on this bend but not very much though the reason I need to accelerate is probably because it's a slightly more uphill so now I'm not accelerating at all it gives me more time to turn and then I can give a gentle acceleration then for the straight so as a, it all depends on the hills that's why it's always so good to keep an eye on your hills when you're driving to look for is there an uphill up ahead is it downhill is it flat and very very often then that can um, tell you what you need to be doing with the accelerator and the brake so as I always say read the road ahead plan ahead and be the best driver you can be that way so you will be doing a reverse around the corner in your driving test and sometimes that may involve reversing uphill and if you are reversing uphill you're going to need more acceleration I'm going to do this corner here now you'll see I'm parked on the flat part but the second half of the corner up here is quite uphill so this will be a similar position that you'll be asked to park in initially before you start your corner you'll park before the corner then you'll be you'll be asked to drive past it and then park on the left where my car is so as you're driving past this area here as you're driving past the road it's good to have a look into the road so you can see what kind of corner it is and for example if it is uphill just be prepared to use more acceleration as you're reversing uphill for more control as I'm about to show you now okay so I'm going to reverse around this corner now that I was showing you the first part the first half will be mainly clutch control so just using the clutch because it's flat but the second part I'll have to use a bit of acceleration because if I don't use a bit of acceleration the car may struggle or chug a little bit or possibly even conk out on the hill so I need that bit of acceleration towards the latter half to maintain some control on the reverse around the corner okay so let's get on with it then so into reverse gear first of all get the reverse light on so people know what I'm doing good look around there now mainly clutch so I have my right foot sort of over the brake and I'm just getting a small little bite here now I'm back I go then nice and slowly I'm kind of keeping it nice and slow that's just a little drain there I've gone into slow slow uh, using clutch control no acceleration here nice and slow so I'm looking what's behind there everything looks, looks okay here then every so often I'm just checking the mirrors on the right shoulder as well so checking the mirrors now I can see that the curb has gone from my mirror here so that means I'm going to just give it a right shoulder check here I'm just going to start turning gently into the road looks all good now what's behind me turn the wheel slowly that's just a drain there I've gone into checking the shoulder now I'm going about to go up this hill here now this is the start of the hill here okay so you're going to hear a little bit of juice now you hear that there and I'm going to keep doing the clutch control okay so I'm just keeping that acceleration consistent hopefully you'll hear that there just the acceleration there and I'm still using the clutch control checking mirrors and shoulders gentle steers so let's listen for that acceleration again and this is making the whole reverse very very smooth and I'm practically at the end here now now I'm just going to try it without accelerating now just so you'll see so I'm going to let go of the accelerator just kind of struggling a little bit there do you hear that? it's kind of, I, I, I don't know if you hear that it's kind of like a bit of a vibration it's kind of like a small little chugging sound on the on the car and if I do it a bit quicker then oh there it was just on the verge of conking out there I'm just going to secure the car now because I'm back far enough handbrake and neutral so you saw there at the end when I wasn't accelerating the car started to make a vibration kind of a chugging struggling sound and then when I was a little bit hasty a little bit quick with the clutch there at the end uh, without without accelerating it almost caused the car to stall there so that goes to show how important it is to use at least a little bit of acceleration when you're reversing up a hill maybe some more depending on the hill so small hill small acceleration but you need it for smoothness and for more control i hope you found this video useful and informative if you did then please give it a thumbs up i'll be back very soon with another driving lesson video so i hope to see you then thanks for watching and bye for now